name is Alexa Schwab, and I'm 16 years old. Being 16 years old means I'm able to drive and make my parents very nervous. I also have a lot on my mind, such as social pressures, studying for the SATs, homework, and boys. Hi, I'm my brother, Sammy Schwab, and I also have a lot on my mind. For instance, at lunch, do I go with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or turkey sandwich? A juice box or milk? Big decisions here. So basically, we're your typical teenagers. But over the past few years, we have learned something that has changed our lives. By taking one little step can lead to so much. So what did we do? We got off our butts and we took action. The way I decided to take action was with sports. I love sports. I love talking and reading about it, debating it, and learning life lessons and great stories on it. So when I turned 13, I decided to start my own sports commentary show, featured on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, called Sammy Sports Kids Network. I waited almost a year before I started it. I mean, I was afraid to put myself out there and was nervous what people would think of it. I asked myself, why would I risk embarrassing myself? So, in January 2016, I decided to put together my very first episode. I wrote and rewrote the script, edited it, created the set, decided on what to wear, everything. Then, after videoing it and editing it again, I posted it online. Guess how many people watched it the first two days? No. Nine. I worked on it for eight hours, and nine people watched it. And two of those were my grandparents. <laughs> I was so bummed. But did I give up? No. I took action. I looked up a bunch of articles online on social media and how to get my show out there, and I asked for my family to email it to friends and to share it online. Most importantly, I told my grandma to tell her bridge club. <laughs> I, got a lot, I got a lot of important feedback from my first few shows. First of all, I can't look down on my script, but I have to memorize it. Also, my logo, it was terrible. <laughs> Whoever cut those lines on my logo really needs to go back to third grade and learn how to cut straight lines again. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for the vote of confidence, Sammy. What happened next? Well, I kept taking action. I worked harder on my script, asked for lots of feedback, and refused to give up. I knew my friends were going to make fun of me, but it was going to be worth it, and my taking action was going to pay off. And it started to. One night, when I got home, when I got home from soccer practice, I checked my phone and I realized that NFL Hall of Famers Marcus Allen and Shannon Sharp had retweeted my video on Twitter. Then, I checked my phone again, and New York Giants star wide receiver Odo Beckham Jr. had liked it. I was so happy, I was probably jumping up and down on my couch for at least an hour that night. I probably worked on my script and my set and everything over 300 hours the first year, but I realized that my taking action had paid off. My show started to gain notoriety. I realized that if I interviewed athletes, it helped me promote my show. Also, I went to the ESPN Sports Center Studios, which is easily the coolest place on earth. Okay, fast forward one and a half years later. My show has been viewed over a million times. I've been able to interview top-notch athletes. I've been, fe been featured on four different news stations and I've broadcasted sporting events. And Sammy, what was the lesson you learned? Take action. Don't procrastinate. Don't be worried about negative feedback. You can't make something better if you don't start it. By taking action, not only did I better learn how to deal with constructive criticism, but it showed me how hard work can pay, to, can pay off and created so many opportunities I would have never had before. Keep in mind, that taking action isn't very easy. It pushes you out of your comfort zones and makes you face your fears. 
You may run into what seems like constant roadblocks, and you risk failing in front of others. Some people might try and bring you down, but you just have to think to yourself, why would I ever want to take action? I'll tell you why. It makes you grow. It gives you confidence, and it may even make you realize your dream, like it did with me and my sport show. Sammy, despite what I say around the house, you are pretty cool. Thanks, Alexa. Why don't you share what happened with you when you decided to take action? Our sister Madison, Sammy and I, loved to volunteer. Our favorite way to volunteer was to help teachers and tutor at Melrose Elementary School in downtown Hereford, Pennsylvania. We would go there every chance we could. A teacher that we know there invited us one day, and we never went in to leave. Although we were very nervous, going to a school where we only knew the one person that invited us, and it was in an older part of downtown Harrisburg. But over time, we realized how tutoring not only made us feel, but how it had such a positive impact. The kids there were truly amazing, and we really felt like we were making a difference. The school was awesome, and the teachers and kids were so appreciative of our help. What really hit home one day was in Madison, Sammy and I went to tutor. We brought licorice for the kids as a treat. As we were about to hand it out, the teacher stopped us. She told us that she had a question for the class. She asked the class of 30, how many of them have ever had a Twizzler? I'd say confidently, three kids raised their hands. How could these kids never had licorice before? That was our wake-up call. So we had to keep doing more to make these amazing kids feel special and help them succeed. We loved what we were doing, and it was so fulfilling. But we wanted to do more. How could we do something more substantial so that after we go away to college, we could still be making an impact? Now that would be amazing. Working with the gifted teacher at the school, we came up with a four-letter word. No, not that one. I'm referring to S-T-E-M. We wanted to create a STEM center in the school. STEM stands for, stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. We read about how far the U.S. is behind other countries in STEM and how inner city students don't nearly have enough resources in STEM compared to most students. We wanted to put the school on the map. So what did we do? We took action. Although there were many roadblocks to overcome, such as finding a dedicated classroom in the school. And no, oh, by the way, we needed lots and lots of money for the, all the equipment and supplies. The emotion of gratitude from volunteering quickly turned into motivation. Then we had to create a proposal and get approval from both the superintendent and the principal at Harrisburg City School Districts. And they said yes. We decided to name our STEM Center the MAST STEM Center. M, standing for our sister Madison, A for me, S for Sammy, and T for Tina, the gifted teacher that worked with us at the school. So now, we had a dedicated classroom in the school, but it was empty and we didn't have a roadmap, and we had to figure out the next steps as we progressed. So when we opened the closet in the classroom, it was filled with junk. You couldn't even walk in. But we knew we could find amazing stuff for us to use. So what'd we do? We took action. One Saturday afternoon, Sammy spent six hours going through dirty boxes and found amazing stuff for us to use. So then, we had to outfit the room with STEM technology. We asked for donations and even used some of our own savings for 3D printers, computers, and so much more. We couldn't believe we were actually going to be able to do this. So as we got ready for the grand opening, word had spread about it. And the charity asked if they can get involved with us. The charity, the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation. They focused on building character and teaching critical life lessons to at-risk young people in America's most distressed communities. So at the formal ribbon cutting, not only did we have the representatives from Pennsylvania State Department of Education and other political dignitaries, 
but we also had the superintendent and the mayor. And by the way, we also had the Iron Man himself, Cal Ripken Jr. there at the ribbon cutting. This was one of the coolest things we have ever done. But then, it got much cooler. The Cal Ripken Foundation loved the concept so much, they agreed to co-brand with us and open up nine more STEM centers around the country, and three of them have already been opened. And if things continue to go well, we are looking to open up to 100 STEM centers around the country. Wow, this got so much bigger than we ever expected. Also, the students and teachers that saw what we were doing and the people that saw what we were doing through news coverage saw us taking action. They could get motivated now to take action on their own. A few years ago, I didn't know anyone in this school. And last year, this STEM center didn't exist. But by starting something and taking action, it brought us to this and really reinforced and taught us a valuable lesson. Take action. I will never forget, after the ribbon cutting with Cal, we gave all the students that helped out with the experiments that day new bat, ball, and glove. All of their thinking notes were so moving, but one really stood out. One of the boys, whose name was Marlon, who was eight years old. His brother, 10. He said he's never gotten along with his brother before, ever. Until they played with a new ball, bat, and glove. He said that was the best time he ever had with his brother before, and that they played outside for hours. That motivated me to keep doing more and to never stop taking action. I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am. I wasn't on my phone checking social media, I wasn't shopping at the malls with my friends, and I wasn't sleeping until noon. I was changing lives and doing what I love. It started small, but then grew. By the three of us taking action and volunteering and trying to make an impact, we made an impact that will last for years to come. Each of us has the ability to make the world a better place, whether it's in small ways or more lasting ways. However, you'll never know the impact you can make on yourself, the community, or the world if you don't take action. Think about something that you already love doing or want to accomplish. What would make you, your friends, or your family happier and more fulfilled? What if you got your soccer team or school club, or just any group of friends to take action and accomplish something with you. There are so many ways your actions can be fulfilling and maybe even sustainable and make a lasting impact. Don't worry about adversity, criticism, fear, or even your age. I'm 16 and look at the results of my taking action. Follow your passion. Taking pride in your accomplishments if you're doing what you like will more, most likely make you happier, and you never know the results. When you're doing something you're, you love, it comes naturally, and your success is inevitable. Don't procrastinate. I'm just 14 and decided to take action, and look at the results. Stop. Think about what you want to accomplish. Do you want to lose those 10 pounds? Do you want to make your sports team? Do you want to get a new opportunity at work? Or is there just that one idea, one idea that you've been sitting on for such a long time but haven't done anything with it? Take a second. Think about what you want to accomplish. Now imagine what you can do with that idea if you take action now. Thank, Thank you. you.